Today, we are learning about Excel dynamic data ranges. Oh yes, not just simple data ranges, dynamic data ranges. Let's get started. Here we have two sets of data and I want to calculate average price and total number of units for uh, these data sets. Now the twist is that I want the calculations of average price and total number of units to update itself every time a new product is added to the data range. Now, how we do it usually, like if I have to calculate average price, I will simply add the average function, select the range, watch closely, select the range, close parenthesis, hit enter, and it will calculate the average price for me. Same way, if I have to calculate total number of units, I will use some function like so, selecting the range, close parentheses, hit enter. Done, it's easy. However, using this approach, if I add another product, it's not going to show up or update the average price and total units calculation for me. Then the main reason is, if we look at the formula closely, I have given a specific cell to start from and a specific cell to end at, and this tells Excel to stay within this range. I have basically limit Excel to only consider the data within these cells for average calculation. All right, and this is called a normal data range or a static data range. Now, remember our requirement was that our average price calculation and total units calculation should update itself every time a new product is added. And this is only possible by having a dynamic data range. And now there are several methods to achieve this dynamic data range solution, but the easiest one and my personal favorite is by converting a normal data range into Excel table. So here we have another data set, which is basically the same one as we have here. So to convert a normal data range into Excel table, simply select the data, go to insert tab, hit table. Make sure my table has header is checked because the first row in the selection is the name of columns. Click okay, and it will convert my range into Excel tables. Now let me just make the calculations and then I will explain how and why Excel table achieves dynamic data ranges for us. So average function, selecting the range. Now watch closely. Instead of having a fixed cell address to start from and a fixed cell address to end at, what I have is a name of the table Table 19 is the name of this table and the name of the column inside the average function. So in short, what this is telling Excel is to go to table 19, sorry, go to price per unit named column in table 19. Now by giving the name of the column instead of the length of the data range, whatever is included in this column will be considered for average calculation this way of referencing a data range is technically called structured data referencing system. You will be able to read in detail about structured data referencing system on the link that I will provide in the description. So do check it out as I have explained much more on my website. All right, close parenthesis, hit enter, and it has calculated or has, it has given us the same number as we have here. Similarly, sum, selecting the range, close. All right, now if I'm going to add a new product to this range, it will update the calculations automatically for us. See, easy. So in short, Excel table helps us get dynamic data ranges for calculations. 
Now that we have understood the difference between a static data range and dynamic data range, let's put it to use in, in a little advanced tool in Excel. So here we have an invoice template where we have a customer name, the related particulars and the products that it has bought or we will be selling to this customer, etc. Now I can access the number of customers that I already have in the database. I can access the database on this tab, see here, four customers and the same four customers show up here. Now my requirement is that if I add a new customer to this database, it should show up automatically in this drop-down menu. Again, this is a case of dynamic data range. But just to prove you that normal data ranges don't achieve dynamic input and output, let me add a new customer. See, it is not showing up in this drop-down menu. So let's see how dynamic data ranges helps us get this fixed in this template. Go to customers tab. Let me delete this part of the data. All right, select the data range. Go to insert tab, hit table. Make sure my table has header is checked. Click OK. And this will convert a simple data range into Excel tables. Now remember, we already know Excel tables help us achieve dynamic data range. However, we have a slight problem here. The tool we use to achieve this drop-down functionality is called data validation tool. And for some reason, I don't know why, we cannot use structured data referencing system directly inside data validation tool. So we will have to work it out using a different method. Having the customers tab selected, go to formulas tab, hit name manager, click new, give it a name, customers names, and in this refers to cell, select this range. You can see table 20, table 20 is the name of this table, and the name is the name of this column. Click okay close. Now remember the name we have defined which was customers names. Go back to invoice tab. Now this is the cell where I want a drop down menu to appear. So go to data tab, click data validation. From here we will select list and in the source input bar I will give the name we have defined. Customers names. Click OK. And now I have the name of the customers showing up. All right, now point to prove if we have achieved dynamic data range capability. So let's add another customer. And it should show up on our invoice template. Let's see, here you go. So today we have learned about dynamic data ranges why they are better than static dynamic ranges and one of the best uses of dynamic data ranges in Excel that is using them as an input to data validation drop down menus. Hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If so, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future content and see you in the next video.